If you have not heard about a version control system like Git, GitHub, SVN, then probably you are living in the wrong IT world. Well, version control systems are nowadays everywhere. We will understand what is version control system, which one we are going to use, why, why Git. We are going to focus more on Git. And we will understand why we are doing that. But before I start version controlling system and explain you about the concept, let me tell you about other concepts. We are going to cover a little bit of background. I am going to talk about normal backup and restore process that we follow. Being DevOps, we would be updating a lot of configuration files. We would be writing scripts and we would, doing lot of, we would be doing a lot of file operations. But before we make any change to a file, it's always a good practice to take its backup. So let's assume I am on a server. So I have created directory VCS server conf in my system. In this directory, I have placed two files. These are some Python script that we have developed in previous Python sessions. It's a module file. And this one is a file that call those modules, call those functions. So let's say I want to make some changes to this files, to this uh, script or configuration file. So let's edit it. I'm copying something and pasting it over here. Okay, I made some changes to this file. Okay, that's fine. But what happens if this stops working, if my script stops working or if my server configuration when I change, the server stops working or it's failing. Next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert all those changes back. And to do that, I should remember all those changes that I made. And frankly, I don't remember now. Really, I don't know what all changes I made. You know, if I have a very good memory, probably I will remember, I'll be able to revert the change. But that's about just one file. Like that, if I'm editing 10 files, then what will happen? It's not possible to memorize, or it's almost impossible to memorize all this content and revert it back how it was previously. Remembering all those things. So what we do is we take backup before we make any change. This is a thumb rule of system administration of any operations work. Before you make any change to a file, take its backup. So before making the change, I will take the backup. I will copy the file with a different name and I'll, let's say I'll put an extension underscore backup. Then I will update the original file. Let's say I made a lot of changes here and there. Okay, saved. And after I made change, things stopped working or oh, they are not working as expected. So I want to roll back. I can roll back because I have a backup. So I will copy the backup file with the name of the original file like replace and then we are back to where we started. So this is a very normal backup and restore process. But let's say I'm doing it regularly almost daily. I'm making changes or multiple times in a day. So I would like to take its backup. So what will I name it? Backup one. Again, I'm making some change. So again, backup two, backup three, or backup latest or backup old. So I'll start giving it different, different name. And why I'm taking it back up again and again, because if I want to roll back to a particular uh, time, you know, when the setting was so and so, so I should be able to have the backup of that file at that particular time. 
but the way I am taking back up it's very bad with this numbering system or with this weird names latest old and all it's difficult for me to track now this file was edited when of course we can run ls-ltr but if you move the file or edit the file this update time will change so we can't just rely on this time so what I'm going to do is so this is not a good method of taking backup okay I'm going to remove underscore backup star okay and then let's start this process again of taking backup but this time you will be smart enough I am going to give proper version to my backup file based on the timestamp so that's the current time right now on my system and when I'm going to take the backup of the file I'm going to rename it with the timestamp so that should be I can start with the year 19 the month and the date but if I can add the time also that will be much better then it will be minute tracking underscore backup you can have some extension like this one whatever extension you have keep it standard across your organization so you can understand that this is a backup file now the name of the backup file will tell me when this was backed up and if I keep taking backups I'm going to go into future times Let's see this was taken on 20 then some other backup was taken on 22 some other backup was taken on the next month second date and in the same date I have taken then backup twice 22 30 now if you see these backup files are properly versioned now if I want to go back to a setting that was on a particular date and time I can just look at the name of the file and I can just overwrite that file with the original file rollback done you can easily revert to a particular date and time it's like going back in time so this is a very standard method of taking backup in system administration because being a system administrator you'd be maintaining some configuration files which before you make any change you'd like to take its backup or you're writing an automation script and you want whenever before you make any change to your script you'd like to take a backup so if things are not working you can roll back so the benefit of having this strategy is we can roll back any time in any, any point in time but that will also collect a lot of backup files if you are regularly making changes so you should also have a strategy to uh, rotate these backup files so we can zip them and move it to a different location and keep it over there as long as we are not done with those backup files if we don't need it then we can delete them to save some space so to rotate this backup files and not keep it in this place I will create a directory sole choice underscore dir and I will remove all my backups to that directory Okay, then I will archive it tar hyphen czvf that's archived and now I can move it to a different place where for the storage and if something goes wrong then I can revert back I can bring back my zip file compare the files and roll it back so I'll remove that directory since the backup is already taken so you see we have taken the backup of the files first before making the change then we are taking backup of backup 
the backup files that we created we uh, zip them together we take its backup and we keep it at some some other location so we'd be probably moving it to some other location let's say some shared directory or some place where you can keep our backup files a storage and let's say it's at some different place we moved it so these are some standards that you should follow whenever you're dealing with configuration files or scripts do not forget to take backup before you make any change because things will go bad they tend to go bad there is nothing 100% up and running and 100% safe to save yourself you should always take backup before making change and these are some very standard process of taking backup of files which is good but if I put you in a position where you have hundreds and thousands of files which gets edited almost daily and you have to take its backup then it will be a very very cumbersome process if you are following this standard. If we have hundreds and thousands of files like a source code for a software where developers are writing source code in such cases this method won't suffice we need a better tool we need a tool which can do all this for us automatically such kind of tools are called as version control system and we'll see that in the next video thank you for watching this one